Hi, and welcome to the Dream Awake podcast. Everything that you bring love to opens up more space inside of yourself to, to know that you are love, but then as a result, you attract more love because you have more space within yourself. People recognize that and are attracted to that. And so that's a byproduct of just loving yourself. So that's what we're going to do tonight. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. So go ahead and use the paper. I'm going to plow through the questions just so that I can give you a really solid session, okay? So if you don't get fully through a question, it's okay, I'm going to ask them inside the action tapping session anyway. So first question around self-love. How are you not loving yourself? And let's just be real, really honest right now. No one else in the room is going to know what you wrote. They might hear what you said, but they're going to be going through their own process anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So how are you not loving yourself? What area of your life are you not loving? Okay? And then what are some of the negative emotions that come up when you think about that particular area of your life and how you're not loving yourself? Do you feel sadness? Do you feel anger? Do you feel frustration? Do you feel pity? Do you feel shame? Do you feel fear? Resentment? Blame? Unfairness? What are some of the emotions that come up when this area in your life is triggered? When this self-doubt comes up inside your mind? When this critical voice enters your mind? What are the emotions that also come with it? How do you feel? What are those limiting thoughts and limiting emotions, should I say? Okay, so once you've got those down, next question. What are the negative thoughts that come up when you think about this particular challenge with loving yourself? What are the negative thoughts? I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of love. I can't do it. I'm not ready. They'll laugh at me. What if I fail? It's not worth it. I'm not even going to try. It's too hard. I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have the right degree. I'm not ready. I hate myself. They're better than me. I don't deserve to get that. So what are some of those thoughts that come up along with it? And just write them all down because these are the doorway. These are the gift that are giving us insight to the subconscious. They're the bubbles that arise on the surface, deeply triggered from underneath the surface. So write down those thoughts. Next question. What is your earliest memory of feeling and thinking a similar way? Now, you may have felt it yesterday, but as I was mentioning before, things happen in cycles and they repeat so just try to think about what is an earliest memory that you have. May not be the earliest, but try to go down as well as you can of feeling and thinking a similar way about this. What were you doing? Where were you? Who was involved? What was happening? Just write down that memory that comes to mind straight away. Next question is, who in your earlier childhood life had similar beliefs and emotions to you in this area? Who in your earlier childhood life acted or thought a similar way to what you're thinking right now? Was it mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, aunt? Was it the school teacher? Was it the Pope? Was it aliens? Could have been anyone, right? And if you believe it in your mind that they were doing that, then that is your earliest person, regardless of if it was true or not. And sometimes we're like, well, maybe they weren't doing it, maybe they were just thinking that. But if you thought it, then it's real for you to write down that person who had a similar way. What does your culture say about the issue? So the culture is imprinting us all the time about our challenges. The culture is always telling us what to think, what to believe. 
You're too fat. And my body's meant to look like this. You're too skinny. What's what's the belief that the culture passes down? You should be making more money. You should be married by now. He lost there. Yeah, like no one's married. We're in it together. What color would it be if it had a color? So if you tune into it and there's a color in your body, what is the color? Just first color that comes to mind. Brown, black, gray, metallic, greenish, yellow. Color is also reflecting what's going on in the aura. What texture would it be if it had a texture? So the first texture that comes to mind is it hard? Is it sticky? Is it prickly? Is it festering? Is it oozing? Is it granular? What's the texture of it? This also helps you feel what's happening energetically in the body as well because the energy, the thought, the emotion does come in texture. And what would be a reason, if there was a reason, now there may not be because sometimes we think there's not, but actually there's always a reason for why you would hold on to it. Most of the time we hold on to an issue or we hold on to a habit or a challenge because we think it's protecting us. So most of the time it's for some type of protection. It could also be you're trying to prove a point. You're trying to punish yourself. You're trying to punish someone else. What would be your reason if you were holding on to it? What would it be? You don't know Ask yourself this question. What am I getting out of this? How is this helping me? How is it helping me to have this in some weird way? Because the subconscious is actually just trying to help you, right? But sometimes it doesn't really know how and it thinks it's doing a good job but it's just very old animal programming of the brain that it stores information in order to take care of itself. And sometimes that information isn't completely accurate or doesn't have all the wisdom it needs. Okay. Last question. If this issue didn't exist, what would be happening in your life? Write down what would be happening in your life if the issue didn't exist. Yes, I'm here and I'm guiding you, but it's not 
about me. It's about you and your own inner world and what you're feeling and what's coming up inside of you. Because whatever's coming up inside of you is something that wants to be deeply listened to and deeply loved. So tune into your challenge right now of how you're not loving yourself. Tune into that area that you broke down. I want you to feel that right now. I want you to really feel how that challenge feels right now. Just take a big, deep breath, release the big sigh. Tap in the center of the chest, repeating after me. If the word isn't completely accurate, you can change the word to match your own experience. If you don't know what you feel, just go along with me. You can't bring in negativity any deeper, but I can put a poke you and see if something comes. So repeating after me, even though I haven't been loving myself fully. Even though I haven't been loving myself fully. I'm open to forgiving myself. I'm open to forgiving myself. And I'm open to learning how I can love myself more. And I'm open to learning how to love myself more. It's possible I am worthy of more love. It's possible I am worthy of more love. It's possible I'm worthy of feeling more love. It's possible that I'm worthy. And I'm ready to look at these uncomfortable places. And I'm ready to look at these uncomfortable places. All of this blame and shame that I've been having. All of this blame and shame that I've been having. I'm ready to look at it now. I'm ready to look at it now. Big deep breath, big sigh. Zero being you're completely free. 
What's the number of it right now? It's a name number. I forgive myself even though it's a name number. Do you need that number right now? Just feel what that number feels like in your body, tucking the front of the ribs. Tune into that number that you just gave. Tune into what that number makes you feel. Take a big deep breath, release a big sigh. Tucking <sighs> <sighs> the side of the ribs. I really want to get rid of this. I've been having this for way too long. Tune into that feeling. 
situation. I really needed, and then what it is? I really needed. But I wasn't getting it. Tapping the side of the
name what it feels like to you. It feels, name what it feels like to receive the message. I feel really, name what it is. When I hear, name what the message was.
of this garden. I think I might even feel more safe if I let it go. Because all this holding on doesn't feel safe. I'm actually creating more of what I don't want. Isn't that true? When you hold on to it, you actually attract more of things like the rest. So the very thing you're trying to defend yourself from, by holding it, you're actually creating it. Do you really want to hold on to things that are really serving you? No. It's possible it's not serving me. To hold on to what? They want it as you. To hold on to what? It's possible it's not serving me. To hold on to what? And I really want to be free.
what's happening in your life when you allow that to happen. I am in his name what's happening as you allow that to happen. Having the next speaker. I am in his name what's happening. And that feels really like the top three emotions that you feel when you let that happen. I feel really, and then what you feel when you let that happen. And how does that make you want to show up to the world around you? It makes you want to, or what does it make you want to do? Having the next speaker. It makes you want to, what does it make you want to do? And that would feel really, what would that feel like? I really want to, and then what you want to do? Because that would feel like, I'm ready to do this. I can do this. I'm ready to do this. This could be more enjoyable.
Thank you so much for listening to the dream awake podcast i'm your host jennifer partridge if you're interested in taking your tapping practice a little deeper we also have live tapping events to find out more head on over to jenniferpartridge.com and we'll see you next time